and enough heading. Change. I, I'm just tired of it. Hallelujah. So 
sometimes you got to let them all go and just live your life. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Somebody don't want to do right. You sitting around worrying about them. They out there doing everything they big and bad enough to do. Not worried about you. Don't worry about it. You got to get mad. Amen? You got to get mad and then you'll change. Change yourself, change your situation. Amen. 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 Listen, I want you to go to the Word of God with me today. And we're going to go back to uh, uh, that word that was read previously in your hearing. But uh, it was read in this context. But I'm just going to lift up the 26th verse of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and the 26th verse. Amen? Amen. And it reads this way. Amen. You have it? Yeah. It reads this way. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. For, off, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen? Amen. 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 I just want to preach today for a little while before we go out here and get into our cookouts and and eating all those burgers and potato salad and potato salad, uh, I mean, macaroni salad and all that stuff. I just want to preach eating between meals. Mm -hmm. Eating between meals. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pray with me, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask right now that you enter this place in the form of your precious Holy Spirit. Lord, move among us and have thine own way. Lord, I ask right now that you open the hearts and the minds of this waiting congregation that they might receive the word you have deposited in your servant's spirit. Father God, I furthermore request that you would take me and hide me behind the shadow of the cross, that they might not see me but Christ in me. Bless somebody's soul. Cleanse and make them whole. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen. 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 You know, some of us, we try to act like we're on a straight, disciplined, nutritional path. <laughs> when we're out in public, we want to eat salad. I'll have a grilled chicken salad, please. <laughs> With some cottage cheese on the side. Amen. Mm -hmm. But if we were honest, we would say, we would we would be truthful and say that we've been eating some snacks in between yes, sir. Yes, those sir. meals. Yes, sir. Many of us have a little secret closet, not for prayer. <laughs> but that's where we hide our Doritos. Yep. That's where we hide our Pringles. Yeah. That's where we hide our cheese doodles. I'm, I'm going down somebody's street in a minute. Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's where we hide our Oreos. Yeah. Come on, yeah. And maybe if you don't like Oreos, maybe you like the vanilla ones. Amen. Uh -huh. That's where we hide our ding dongs and our. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And our Twinkies in that cabinet Come where on. nobody exactly. won't see them. And every now and then we take a nice little comfortable seat in our favorite chair in front of the television and we know it ain't right but we get to snacking amen yeah. and, and, and 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 most of us have enjoyed a fine meal gone out and ate steak and brought back had so much we brought some back with us in little styrofoam packages but instead of going back to that wholesome food that we had left we start snacking own some treats. Amen? Amen. And we rationalize. We say, well, you know, I didn't have something salty. I need something sweet. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Amen. <laughs> I need a little ice cream just to wash it down. Amen. Uh, a little cake here and there. And a little piece won't hurt nobody. And, and the type and the quantity of our snack differs from one person to the other. 
Now you have some people that can follow the uh, 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 the serving guidelines from the potato chip pack uh -huh. bag. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't take the whole bag, but they just take five chips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five chips. It says that these nutritional values you will meet, and the portion size, the the suggested portion size is five chips. Now I will be honest with you. I don't know many people that can eat just five no, potato no, chips no, and then no. put the bag down. As a matter of fact, we don't even buy a bag of potato chips with, with, with five potato chips. When you buy a small bag of potato chips, you got three or four servings in there, amen? And I don't know anybody that opens a bag of potato chips and just take a couple out and then save the little bag for later, amen? I don't see that happening, amen? And you know how Doritos they, they pride themselves on the fact that nobody can eat just one. Amen. Uh, they know you're going to eat more than one if you get the taste in your mouth. Chips and cookies and candies and all kinds of snacks. They commonplace for a lot of us. I mean, we got them stocked up and we nibble and we crunch. And I know I'm talking to somebody who knows what I'm talking. I might as well go ahead and say amen. I, amen. <laughs> you know, besides the fact that we increase the calories that we, we take in, but we also increase the sugar and the, the carbohydrate levels. And, and eating between meals has a tendency to dull your appetite for the next good meal. When you eat salty snacks, it seems like you can never get your food salty enough. Amen? When you eat a lot of sugary things, it seems like nothing is ever sweet. Amen? You go from putting one sugar in your coffee. Oh, my goodness. And then you eat a lot of sweets, and it seems like you got to have three sugars in your coffee. And before you know it, you're putting four sugars in one cup of coffee just to get that sweet tooth, as they call it, satisfied. I know I'm talking to somebody, amen? amen. And, and a lot of children, they, they don't understand their parents when they frown upon the stacking between meals. They just don't get it. Why can't I have a cookie before breakfast, amen? Why can't I have some ice cream uh, right before dinner instead of after dinner, amen? They don't understand uh, the concept uh, and, 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 and they, they, they want to convince us that you know if they eat a candy even if I eat a candy bar mommy or a bag of chips or a soda pop or a sweet cake or two I'm still going to eat my food amen they try to run that on you to get them to give them that snack amen and, 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 and you know your parents you know your parents they, they, they lead their children away from snacking between meals because they know despite uh, their children's bold and, 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 and sneaky little mental appetite, they know that they, if they eat this stuff between meals, they're not going to eat your dinner. Right. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you something to, to put some of you at ease, because some of y'all starting to wiggle around in your seat. I, 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 like I'm talking about you, amen? Uh, oh, you know, you start talking, coming down Folk Street, they get to looking down and they playing with their uh, looking around. Other people. Don't worry about it. I'm not talking about you because, you know, snacks by themselves are not necessarily detrimental to your health. I mean, anything in moderation is all right. Amen. And a lot of snacks are, are, are kind of tasty and they can be nutritious, too. Amen. You can snack on some celery. Yes. Put a little, ain't nobody giving me no amen on that. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 <laughs> you can get some carrots. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. How about you take some cucumbers and put a little vinegar, man, and a little, yes. and a little oh, salt and pepper. And, and that's, a, that's a nutritious yes. snack. Amen. 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 But listen, if you eat too much before a major meal, Snacks can have a negative effect on you. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. They keep you from getting the good things and just getting the bad things. So there's such thing as good carbs and bad carbs and all that. All of us that have been through our dieting phase probably did a little studying on nutrition and what we should have and what we shouldn't have. But it didn't really change us for that long. Amen? Amen. Amen. There are a lot of us 
who have at one time or another eaten a full meal at the Lord's table. Right here in the church. Amen? And then you, you, you lose your appetite for the next Lord's Supper. Amen? Because you've been eating some things in between meal. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Uh, uh, that you shouldn't have been eating and they have stunted your spiritual appetite. Amen? For real spiritual sustenance that comes from the Lord's table. Amen? You got some folk that were here for communion last month. But they're not here for communion this month. Mm -hmm. They've been eating some things between meals. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, some folk uh, ate and snacked on just a little bit too much alcohol mm -hmm. to be here mm -hmm. for this meal. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, some folk snacking just on a little too much of somebody that they shouldn't have been snacking on. To be here for this meal. They've been eating some things, no pun intended, uh, in between meals that they shouldn't have. Amen? Uh -huh. I'm glad the grown folk laughing. The young people looking at me like, what are you talking about? Amen? <laughs> Amen. It's the main course that brings the nutrition necessary to keep you going in your body. And for us, the Lord's Supper represents the main course. It's the time when you spiritually renew your vows to God. You commit to Him. I mean, you commit yourself or, or herself, you know, you, you commit himself or herself to a life of faith. And a faith that's rooted in dependence on God, not on the world. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm telling you, you should appreciate the Lord's Supper because it symbolizes our relationship with Christ. And his promises that he made to us. Amen? Amen? That's important for me. I don't know how important it is for you, but when it comes to renewing my relationship with Christ, snack food won't do it. All right, now. All right. I can't get a snack every now and then. I got to get some meat. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. I, I got to get some bread. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I got to get a little wine with it. I ain't talking uh -huh. about ripple. Amen. <laughs> but I need some wine to keep me going. Yes. Now, now, when we look at the Bible here, the text here, we got Paul explaining the Lord's Supper. He's trying to mm -hmm. let them know the purpose and the frequency, how often you should eat this Lord's Supper. Amen? Mm -hmm. And see, the problem was that early believers, especially in the church at Corinth, they uh, observed the Lord's Supper very frequently. And as a matter of fact, they did it so often that it got big, like a big banquet. It wasn't just bread and wine like we do. You know, we have a little bread, we have a little wine, nobody getting full and nobody getting drunk. But they would come and they would feast and they would get drunk on wine and they actually called them love feast. Amen? Amen. They all kind of food and, and drink for everybody there, the best wine around, and they did it often. Amen? Amen. Now, somewhere in that observance, the Corinthians, they lost sight of the real meaning of the Lord's Supper, though. They didn't realize what it was. You know how it is with us. Like, many of us are going to go out tomorrow, and we're going to cook burgers, and, and we're going we're gonna, to, uh, you know, uh, 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 barbecue some ribs and, and, and make some hamburgers and some sausage. And it's the 4th of July, but very few of us really uh, uh, acknowledge what Independence Day is all about. Amen. Amen. Amen? We don't know that, that it's about America and the independence of America and all of that and all that other historic stuff. We don't know anything about that because we've been celebrating Independence Day for so long. For us, now it's just a day off. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's just a day off. And that, that's the same thing with communion. If you do something in the church too often, it becomes mundane. It doesn't become important. It doesn't become significant in your life. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, 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 you know, you have some churches that, that like to wash each other's feet. Amen? Amen. They're called primitive Baptist churches. Amen? Right. Right. 
And, and after a while, after you've done that so many times, it's not about service. That's right. Amen? Right. It's not about service. It's not about showing service. But it just becomes a routine thing. Amen? Yeah. That's the same thing with the Lord's Supper. Now, the Lord's Supper is a reminder of the sacrifice that Christ uh, did for us, right? The wine is used to remind us of the blood. Amen. And he shed this blood for you, for your sins. Amen? Amen? The bread is supposed to be a reminder of his body that he gave for ransom. He was wounded for all transgressions. We all know that, right? Amen. But many of us, we, 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 we get antsy when communion time comes. It's just something that, that we do. So, we, you know, communion is supposed to be a solemn thing, but... You know, we talking about uh, what we got to pick up at the mall and how we got to run to Macy's and pay our, our Macy's card and, and what we going to cook when the, in the evening come in. Communion is being passed out and we thinking all kind of silliness because it's become mundane to us. Folk just talking about all kind of trivial stuff during the communion service. Amen? Communion service is commemorating the death of someone on your behalf. Amen. It's not a time to be talking about the fun things that you're going to do after church is over. Amen? Amen? Amen. And, 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 you know, Corinthians, they, he tried to warn them that they should not come to this observance just to eat and to party. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, in, in verse 34, he told them to stay at home if they were hungry and don't even come to the Lord's Supper. That's right. All right. Paul talked about how often you should eat or uh, 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 be engaged in the Lord's Supper. He used the words as often to describe how often. So he didn't give a specific amount of times we should do it. Uh -huh. Often leaves it up to us. That's right. Now, in, in most Eastern churches, they have the Lord's Supper every year, once a year. In the Church of England, they, they observe it every, uh, uh, excuse me, three times a year. And it, but for most of us who 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 were gazed in, in in black churches and or African American churches or whatever phrase we want to call ourselves these days, we we normally do it once a month, right? Once a month we come together. It might be on the first Sunday, which 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 is which is appropriate. And some people even called this when they had smaller churches. They called it Pastoral Sunday. Amen. Because that that was the Sunday they took up the smallest offering of the month, the offering for the pastor. Amen. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. And, 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 and they called it the Pastoral Sunday. Amen? And you see some people, they forget that it was Pastoral Sunday, and they get ready to put one thing in the collection plate, and then somebody says it's Pastoral Sunday. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> they got to put that back. They put that, got to put that 10 back and get that $5 bill out there. And put it, you know what I'm talking about? Amen. That's Pastoral Sunday. And, and a lot of people... Um, Believe that things done too frequently lose their significance. If you've got something with long intervals in between each time you do it, they say it becomes more significant. All of us can agree that the matters of frequency are not as significant as the meaning of the observance. Amen? Amen. My birthday comes once a year, but that's a special day every time it comes. Amen? Amen. You know, Christmas comes once a year. But it's, for many of us, a special time of year. Amen? Uh, some of us have special days that we do things with our family that we do once a year or once every two years. And it's a special time for us. But the Lord's Supper is a spiritual meal. And spirituality is, is something that has to be renewed. And we have to come and we have to renew our vows to God because we forget. Many times we forget what he sacrificed for us. Am I right? We forget what it costs for our salvation. Amen? We won't, we, won't, we won't serve. We won't give. We won't do anything for a while because we forget. Some of us can just take off and not come to church. We just sit at home. You know what I mean? Watch TV or sleep on Sunday morning for months and months and then we come back. Amen? Because it has lost its significance. For for me, I, I don't want to miss the Lord's Supper. Amen? Amen? Amen. If anything else, I miss 
some other Sunday. But I don't want to be gone for the Lord's Supper. Amen. I want to be here. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I want to be here when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Because that's the time I get to reflect. And that's the time I get to introspect. You know what I mean? Okay. Look into myself and see what's going on with me. Because they say that you shouldn't come to the Lord's table without a clean heart. Right. You've got to clean your heart first before you come and eat of this bread and drink of this wine. Amen? Because if you don't, you know, you're drinking damnation onto yourself as, as opposed to a blessing. And, 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 and for many of us, it's a time when we can see God clear. Yes. And, 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 and with more meaning. And it just gives more to the worship service. See, I don't know. I hunger for the return. I want to get it, get to it. Okay. Amen? Amen? I don't ever have a problem. Someone asked me, you know, how do you come up with communion sermons? I don't ever, that's the easiest sermon for me to put together is a communion sermon. Amen? Amen? Because I love it so much what the Lord has done for me. Amen. But you know, <clears throat> we still eat between meals. Even though we got good food, we got good bread, we got good meat. We got good wine. Someone's got real good wine. Uh, uh, we still, it, you know I'm telling the truth. Come on. Uh, uh, amen. We still eat between meals. But you see, the Lord's Supper represents the sacrifice of Christ. And it's a blessed moment in your life every time it's observed. So what, we, what do we do, though, between meals? Well, many of us, we like sweet things. Uh-huh. A lot of us just have a craving for sweet things. They don't make it no easier on TV. They always showing something sweet. You sitting there, you're trying your best to be good. Show something on TV. Now, you know your doctor told you your sugar got to stay at a certain level, but you just can't help yourself. You got to have some sweet things. And sweet things, what they do is they give you a surge of energy. That's why you don't ever want to give a, a small child some sugar uh, when you want them to be quiet and you want them to be haved. You only want to give them sugar when they can go outside. Or if you want to punish somebody, give them some sugar and send them, <laughs> send them with them. Amen. Amen. When I, first, when I first came here, we didn't have a children's ministry, so what I did was, at the end of the service, I would give the young people candy. Not when they came, but when they were on the way out. God bless you. Get you some candy. All right, y'all. Let the parents deal with them. You know what I mean? But, but they got sweet things, amen, because young people always have a sweet tooth, and some of us have carried that over into our adulthood. We like that surge of energy. We like that surge of energy and how it how it messes with those pleasant senses in our brain when that chocolate melts. Oh, yo, somebody know what I'm talking about. When that chocolate melts on our tongue, amen, it just brings us happiness, amen? And there are a lot of us that have sweet things that destroy our spiritual appetite, too. Men got some sweet things. <laughs> Women. Oh, you got some sweet things. Amen. And, 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 and sweet things, whatever they are, they dull your hunger for spiritual things. Because after you've been around with that sweet thing, you've been eating those sweet things. You don't want too much to be involved with the Lord's Supper. Amen. In fact, there are a lot of us who lose our appetite entirely for spiritual matters. Because we've been living on a diet all week long of sweet. Somebody ought to hear what I'm saying today. Amen. I know you might not be doing it now, but you had your time. Amen. Amen. Uh, sweet things. Amen. And then some of us like nutty things. Am I right? Some people like to crunch uh, on nuts. Amen. You know, uh, all kinds. I'm not going there. Uh, they like to crunch on nutty things. Amen. 
There are a lot of us that have, have just plunged ourselves into nutty things, and nutty things occupy our times. We just love sunflower seeds that give us that salt and that and that seed at the same time. And we love peanuts, amen, and, and, and we love walnuts, and, and we love all kind of nutty things, amen? And, and, and you know, nutty things, they, they satisfy your needs to a point that they have lost they satisfy your need to such a point that you lose your appetite for spiritual things. You know, n nuts are very high in protein, and, and protein is very filling. And when you fill up on nuts, you really don't want much else. All right. And, and you know, as, 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 as black men, you know, we move up in the middle class when we start skipping service. Now, many of us, when we were broke, Man, we come to service every day, praying. I mean, every Sunday. We didn't hear Bible study, everything. We're praying, Lord, help me. Lord, give me. Lord, please bless my house. Lord, do this for me. Lord, do that for me. But we got that job, and we start moving up, and all of a sudden, we didn't want to be in church. That's, I know somebody know what I'm talking about. We done moved up into the middle class. We start skipping worship on Sunday, and the Lord's Supper, and, and just to play a round or two of golf. You know what I'm talking about? And some of us women, you know, we, we, we found Sunday to be the perfect time to go shopping. Somehow, the shopping during the Lord's time, since we got money now, is real, real satisfying. Amen? Am I right? You know, the mall is just, just better on Sunday morning for some reason. We, we can make it to the flea market on, All right. All right. on Sunday. Amen? And see, one person's recreation is another person's nutty thing. Uh -huh. it's like skydiving. Oh. That might be somebody's pressure, but I think it's just crazy. <laughs> For somebody to, to jump out of a perfectly good plane. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Uh, you know, uh, 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 mountain climbing. I don't have any idea why somebody would climb a mountain. Amen? Amen? I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. And I'm going to laugh at you for doing it. Amen? Amen? Some people like to go on treks in the woods. Nope. <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to run into no bears. And so what I'm going to do to try to prevent that, I'm going to stay out of there place and hopefully they'll stay out of mind. Amen? Amen. I don't want to go I don't want to go uh, 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 running around with no alligators and wrestling no alligators. I don't want to catch none. All I like to do is wear them. <laughs> Amen? I'm not doing that. Amen? I'm not going and messing around with no bees. I don't want to raise no bees. I don't want to be around no bees. And I don't want to get stung by no bees just trying to get some honey. If I get some honey, it's going to be at the supermarket. Amen? Amen. Some people's likes and are just nutty to other people. Amen? Some people are like me. They just want to sit at home and watch a good fight. I don't want to fight nobody, but I like to watch a good fight. Amen. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to tackle nobody, but I love seeing people get tackled. Amen. Somebody hit me like that, I'm ready to. Hey, you hit me like that, it's over. Amen. One or the other. I'm gonna either get my gun, or I'm gonna run. I'll be running the other way. Amen. Other team just got a touchback because I'm running. Amen. But it's easy for you to let your pastimes take the place of spiritual growth mm -hmm. and spiritual strength. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody likes to be clean. Everybody likes to look good. But Sunday's not the day to be out there washing your car. That's right. Right. That's right. You can do that on Saturday. Amen. You can do that on Monday or Tuesday. And people that are trying to subsist on that kind of diet aren't very hungry for the things of God. Amen. And then you know what? I'm almost done. Then you know what? Some of us like wet things. We like to snack on wet things. Amen? And, and you know, you, you develop this taste for wet things other than water. Right. Some of them, they done got so addicted to wet snacks that they don't want to even drink water. <laughs> Doctor trying to warn them about the, the health of your kidneys and you know the body is is all, uh, uh, is, 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 is is largely made up of water mm -hmm. 
And if you don't uh, 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 replace that water, your organs don't run like they should. You're always tired and you're wondering why. You're out of breath because your lungs are made up of water. Amen? And, 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 and you know what? The, 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 the beer and wine and, and liquor have become your water. To the point that, that you got to have a wet thing associated with any activity you go to. If the activity you go to don't have no wet things, you don't want to go. Huh? They ain't going to be drinking there, you don't want to go. Uh, they ain't going to be having no beer there, you don't want to go. Cookout without liquor is like a meal without meat. You just don't want to be there. Amen? Amen? If you fish, you got to drink. If you hunt, if you watch TV, even if you mow the lawn, you got to drink. Amen? And overconsumption of alcohol has been one of the most destructive forces. It's destroyed families. It's destroyed careers. It's destroyed lives. You, you know, you, 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 it's all right to snack on wet things, but when you've gotten to the point where wet things have taken over, y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. People that have been taken over by wet things, they, they find little interest in the Lord. That little grape juice just ain't going to do it. Amen? Amen? Amen. And you're going to lose your interest for spiritual things and, and lose your focus because you always focused on wet things. Some folk can barely make it through the church service. Amen? As soon as they get to the parking lot, they make a beeline to the bar. Right at... You know I'm telling the truth. Amen? Because they become addicted to wet things. But you know what I want? I want the main course. I want the Lord's Supper. I want to celebrate the Lord. Amen? Amen. The Lord's Supper is actually a celebration of a seven-course meal. Did you know that? It's not a seven-course meal, but it's, it's the celebration of a seven-course meal. The portions of which we have been served all week long. Amen? Amen. If you dine in a five-star restaurant, then you're familiar with the seven-course meal. Many of us don't know about the seven-course meal. When we see people eating a seven-course meal, we say, what is that? Because the seven-course meal, you get a little bit of this on one plate, and then you get a little bit of that on another plate. You don't get no big steak with a seven-course meal because you wouldn't be able to eat the rest of the courses. Amen? But if you go to a fine restaurant, you get a seven-course meal. And you've eaten all these heavy snacks, and, and you, couldn't, you couldn't even finish that seven-course meal. And depending on the restaurant, a seven-course meal includes bread and butter. Then they come back with the salad. Then they come back with the soup or the pasta. Then they come back with the meat entree. Then they might have a fish or a seafood entree, a, a little crab cake or something like that. Then they're going to come with dessert and fruit. And then they're going to come with coffee and, and tea and cheeses. And, and then they're going to come with some, 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 some uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, uh, cappuccino or something to keep you going because you know you're going to fall asleep after eating all that. But see, God serves us a seven-course meal every time we come to the Lord's table. He prepares us with appetizers and feeds us with two main courses and leaves us with some dessert on the way out. And, and a lot of times there's no room for such a meal if you've been eating all that stuff between meals because you're sitting there thinking about all the things you're going to do and all the things that you've done. And because you've been eating between meals, you can't enjoy the Lord's Supper because you've been on a diet of snacks all week. But... What do you do between one blessing and the next blessing? What do you do when you've had one good blessing in between that blessing? Well, uh -huh. you don't need to have a worldly snack when the, when the Lord has blessed you. You don't need to have a worldly snack after uh -huh. the Lord has just filled you yeah. to right. the brim. Because you know the Lord provides for you a full table, right? Yes. You know that you need to avoid snacking between meals. And there are a lot of us that look at the full plate that the Lord gives and say, you know what? He prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. And then after the good meal, when you shared the meal, 
usually you thank the person who provided the meal. Uh, that's the one thing that you want to do. You want to tell the chef how good the meal was. Am I right? If somebody give you some good collard greens and black eyed peas and cornbread and, and potato, y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. You want to go back and thank mama for cooking that meal. You want to go back and thank the cook for providing that meal. Well, what should you do between being blessed? Uh, you, you got to praise the Lord between meals. That's what you need to do. You got to praise him one blessing and then praise him for the next blessing that's on the way you need to be busy praising God all the day long praise him because he's been good and his mercy endured forever praise him because of his wonderful works praise him because he keeps on giving us a full plate every day of our lives praise him because he came down born of a virgin praise him because he stayed yeah, for 33 long years. Praise him because he died on an old rugged cross for the remission of my sins and yours. Praise him because early Sunday morning he got up with all power. I don't know about you, but just like I eat every day, every day I get a blessing. Every day I get a full course meal. I'm not going to mess it up. Snacking on this, snacking on sweet things, snacking on nutty things, snacking on wet things, but I'm going to praise my God for all he's done. I'm so glad that God lifted me. I'm so glad that he set me free. I got to share him in the morning. I got to serve him in the noonday. I got to serve him all night long. I serve him because I ate this morning. I serve him. I'm going to eat this afternoon. I serve him because I'm going to eat tonight. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let none of that stuff out there in the world keep me from serving my God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's better than the sweet stuff. I heard somebody say, he's sweet. I know he's sweet. I know I heard somebody say that he's Alpha and Omega. I heard him say he's the beginning and the end. I heard him say he's my all and my all. Everything I need is wrapped up in him. Ain't he all right? I thirst for him. I hunger for him. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And he pitied every girl. I don't care what they offer me. I'm going to save my best energy for the Lord. For the Lord. I don't have nothing to get a snack. I know you can't tell by looking at me, but I did some snacking in my time. Amen. But somewhere along the line, you got to know when to stop. Amen. You know, most diets, they, they advocate a snack. When you go on a diet, they advocate, advocate a snack. And normally that snack is after you've had three nutritious meals. And they're in the evening, which is the trouble time for us. They offer you a, a snack. Amen. To curb your hunger, to get you through the dark times. Amen. Amen. See, that's why the Lord feeds us. So that we can have, you know, when you walk out of here, it ought not be over, but you ought to take a little snack with you. For later on, because it's going to get dark again. Am I right? You're going to get hungry along the way. Am I right? You need to save a little. You know, when you go to the restaurant, you save a little bit. And then you, you get hungry and you get to, you get like me, you know, get late and you go open it in the refrigerator. 
My mom used to tell me, close that refrigerator. Ain't nothing new in there from the last time. Amen? Amen. But it's nice when you go and you open the refrigerator and you don't forgot that you took that little snack home with you. Amen? And you take that thing and put it on a little thing, put it in the microwave and just sit there and twiddle your toes. Y'all, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. And just enjoy that thing. Amen? Amen. Some people talk about they don't eat leftovers. Well, I'll send them over to me. Amen. I eat them all the time. Amen. You ought to have a little snack to take with you. Amen. You ought to have a little spirituality to take with you. Because it's going to get dark. And you're going to get hungry again. Amen. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. Anybody been hungry? If you've been hungry before, help me sing it. Let somebody know. I know the Lord. church open. Doors of the church are open. I don't know. There might be somebody here that has not yet given their life to the Lord. Amen. I know I see you every Sunday, but I don't know where you're at spiritually. I don't know where you where your heart is. I just opened the doors of the church and let the Lord do his work. Is there one today? Hallelujah. All right. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, he will. Come on, come on. Somebody feel like they need to tell somebody that he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Think about all the things he's brought you through. And every time you think of something, just say, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Remember when you was broke? Just say, yes, he will. Remember when you were sick? Yes, he will. Remember when that person died on you? You thought you couldn't make it without him? And then the Lord stepped in. Come on, just help me sing it. Me. 